Hi guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you are looking for a warm, friendly vermiculture community, you're in the right place. Today we're looking at my largest bin, Blue, which is my 55 gallon, 208 liter food grade barrel that I use for a worm bin. So a question that comes up quite a bit in the comments is, can I have more than one kind of worm in a bin? Will they fight each other? And will they interbreed? So we're going to talk about that while I go through the bin here. Last time we did harvest about five gallons. I don't know if I'll have the ability to do that again, because normally in the wedge system, the way this is set up is the worms migrate this way and go towards the food. Also, they migrate away from low moisture down here. But at 64% humidity and 82.5 degrees Fahrenheit in my basement, I don't know if the worms are going to migrate quite how I like them. So I'm going to, you know, say I'm going to just fluff things up here, but in the event that I have some completely finished worm-free castings, then I will probably snag some. So I'm going to get a bucket here just in case. It's looking pretty good, nice and nice and rich here. So the first thing that we wanted to talk about is can we get all these worms to live in the same bin happily? And the answer is yes. I have had this bin going for many, many years. And it has approximately five different species in there. We have the red wigglers, both different kinds. We have the Andre E and the Fotida, if I'm butchering the Latin, forgive me. And then we have the blue worms, which are the Perionyx excavatus. We have the European night crawlers. We have some African night crawlers. And when I first started my worm bin all those years ago, I actually used soil and compost from my outdoor compost bin to start this with the microbes. So there's the possibility that there are the rubellus, which are the native composty kind of worms in the Midwest here. Well, it looks like we're gonna get about four gallons of a harvest, so that'll be good. That'll give us room today to work. And you can see that there are very few worms in here, if any. I will pick out the one I can see right now, but I generally will just, uh, sift them out and the large chunks go back in the bin at some point later. As for do they get along, I haven't seen any evidence that they don't get along. You don't see worms, you know, in a tangle fighting. Generally, if worms are in a tangle, it's because they're making more worms. And they don't really outcompete each other either so much that I've noticed. Put in the comments below, do you have a bin with multiple kinds of worms and if, do you see any problems with it? I know that AJ uh, at AJ's Green Topics calls it his diversity and inclusion bin um, with the idea that they all get along nicely even though they are very, very different. And I find that to be true as well. I don't see that there's any sort of out competing where one worm takes over and the rest of the worms kind of die out. I don't really see that. What I do see is some cycles in the bin. Like right now it's nice and warm. And I see that the blue worms tend to be a little bit more vigorous when it is warm out. And then in the winter time, you won't see as many of the blue worms running around. In the winter, you will see the red wigglers and the European night crawlers. Now, without a microscope, I can't tell the difference between the two different species of red wigglers, nor can I tell them apart from the rubellus. And in an immature stage, I can't even tell them apart from the European night crawlers. When they're mature, it's a little bit easier because where the clitellum is on the worm is at a different position. Before they get to sexual maturity, when they get the clitellum, it is very difficult to tell them apart. In fact, even in the summertime, when you have the blue worms, unless you see them out streaking around trying to escape like this one here, you're probably not very sure that it's even a blue worm. I can tell blue worms because of the speed. All right, well, this looks like a really good moisture for this part of the wedge. It is drying out. I don't see any food chunks, see very little of the bedding. So this is setting us up really well 
for a harvest to start harvesting for seed starting in January. I know, don't kill me. It's still 90 degrees outside, but you have to build up the stock if you want to use it. Now we also did put a good amount of used potting soil in here. So you will see little bits of perlite. So you will see little bits of perlite and vermiculite and that's okay. That doesn't hurt the worms either. So one of the other things that we ask, so we already answered the, can they live together nicely? And that is yes. They don't outcompete each other because what you see over the course of a season is everybody has their season. The blue worms and the African night crawlers do well in the warm and the other worms do well when it's cool. So they kind of have their own seasons where they will excel and are able to reproduce. Uh, the second question is, you know, do they interbreed? Now, looking at the two different kinds of red wigglers, in theory, according to the books that I've read um, by Clive Edwards, the two uh, species of red wigglers can interbreed, but they do not result in reproductively viable offspring. So think horses and mules, or donkeys, I'm sorry. Horses and donkeys make mules and uh, they aren't uh, capable of being making more. So that's right there at the edge. They're similar. They don't make things that can breed onto a whole new species. When you're looking at European night crawlers and red wigglers, they absolutely cannot. Uh, they are a completely different species. So they just don't line up at all. So we're finding a little bit of a worm ball here The moisture is very, very nice here in the middle. This middle part's probably four or five months old. So that's how the wedge system works. We didn't see hardly any worms over here, but yet here in the middle, although I don't think there's probably very much more food here, uh, the moisture is higher. So you see the worms, they're migrating out of this area into this middle area, and they're finishing up any little bitty scraps that they see and enjoying the, the higher moisture that is in this area. All right, let's move you down to the business end of the bin. Okay, here we are down at the last feeding, which is over here, and then the feeding before that here. So we may see a worm ball. We did harvest and feed a bunch of garden scraps last time. So it's possible that we will get some residual stuff. Looks like the Amazon tape. You know, back in the day, it did degrade, but nowadays, the paper stuff will get eaten away eventually, but these strings, they are not compostable. But I usually take those out when I do the screening. So I'm gonna let the worms continue to eat that uh, paper part. And we put in just strips of cardboard a couple times ago so we can take a look and see if there's any of that left. I know I spend a lot of time shredding cardboard and paper for the worms because it's easier to know how much you're feeding them and how long it will last. But sometimes I like to just put in strips of cardboard and see what happens to see if it takes them a whole lot longer to break it down. And honestly, it's it's kind of a toss up for me. I used to do, I have a whole playlist on what I called the lasagna bin, where I just put strips of cardboard down and food. And honestly, they went and plowed right through it. The bin critters that help the worms out, like the mites, which if you can, I'm not sure if I can hold still long enough for you to see this, but there's mites working on this avocado shell. So when the critters get done breaking things down, then the worms can kind of slurp it up. And uh, in an established bin like this, that happens very quickly. All right. But I'm not, honestly, I'm not seeing any of those strips of cardboard that were not put through the shredder. I'm starting to see some of the bedding that we put in last time, but I'm not really seeing any of the, the pages that I had put in. Which kind of proves what I'm saying is that although it's nice to use shredded cardboard, it's not necessary. If your shredder breaks or you just aren't ordering that much off of the online stores, your worms can just have a, a nice old feast of sheets of cardboard and they will be just fine. Okay, flipping over the last feeding zone here. Seeing basically avocado shells, 
sticks from old plants. I keep my overwintering. Oh, there was a worm ball, darn it. I messed it up. Good worms! They got they held it together long enough for me to get a nice picture. Such good babies. So I like to try and get all the big sticks and put them at the end where the feeding was going so that all the new food can absorb into that and hopefully make it digest a little faster or make it more palatable to whatever critter is going to get into it this next time. Well, I've made myself a good amount of room here. Let me get some bedding. So I've got this regular packing paper, not shredded, just gonna leave it like that. And there's some tape on here and I'll remove that. So when I say that the roly polies are shredders, this was not in a worm bin. This was actually sitting in my big container where I keep my boxes. All these little holes and stuff are made from the roly polies. So they don't really need, worms need their help uh, to make that food available for them. All right, we've got that, now let's get them their food. Just have a little bit of kitchen scraps. Tomatoes, eggshells, the uh, blender died, so they're just going to have to deal with that for a while until I get a new blender. The big part of the feeding today is going to be broccoli stems. And yes, it is likely that this could stink. However, it is in the basement and nowhere near where I live in the property. So that'll be okay. I'm going to cover it up. I tried to grow Romanesco broccoli. This thing never did make a broccoli, ever. It just put out each individual stalk and flowered. It was a huge plant. I mean, it took up five square feet for one plant and I never got anything out of it. Uh, so now the worms, the worms are gonna do it. And then I've got some coconut coir, peat moss, and some more cardboard that I'm going to cover all this up with. There was a sale on cocoa peat online. I don't think it was the highest quality. I'm not gonna recommend it to you guys, but that's what's gonna top it off right there. Hopefully that will keep any sort of critters that might be marauding around my basement from getting into that food. If you have any questions on the content today, please feel free to drop that in the comments below. And if you like this bin, then go ahead and watch the rest of the playlist right over here. But if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like that video right over there. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.